Let's see how relationships between tables are defined in relational databases. They are based on having two keys, a primary key and foreign key. Let's talk first about the primary key, PK. It is a column or group of columns because it can be composed, which makes each row have a unique identifier. A table can only have one primary key. In this case, notice that the social security number column, that is the one with the key, is unique. The name can be repeated. One could be called Graf or Harris. The phone number could be repeated, but the social security number is not. We have changed the presentation to a composite primary key. When one column is not enough, two columns are used. For example, in this case, the primary key, that is unique, is composed of the student number and the course number. And then, the grade. We could always create an additional column called relation ID and put in an auto-incremented number that will never repeat, which would be unique. But there are times when it is better to use a composite key. This key that we have talked about, the primary key, is used to relate to another table with a field which is called a secondary key. It is a field in the table that has the content of the primary key of another table, for example, in a database that has courses and students. We have here that in the courses table the primary key is the course ID, which is unique and it is an auto-incremented number. Then we have the title and the number of credits. At the student table we have the student ID, which is also unique. The name and a field that has the same content as the primary key of the course table. With this we can relate these two tables. In this case, they have the same name. They don't have to be called equally, although it can be practical to be able to relate it at a glance. But what it does is that we can extract data from both tables at the same time. It is important to maintain the referential integrity, which means that in this field, there can only be course values that are in this table. For example, if the courses range from 1 to 3, here it would not make sense for there to be a 4 or a 5, because it would no longer have integrity with the courses that a student can have. It could only have these three. Well, let's see an entity relationship diagram. For example, this is from a database of a grocery store. We see that we have a table for customers, employees, carriers, orders from customers, the details of each order. Another one of products, like bananas, milk, bricks, and macaroni. Here we could have a list with three kilos of bananas or two bricks of milk. Then we have another table for suppliers and for categories. Notice that all of them have their unique primary key. Customer ID, employee ID, carrier ID, order ID, order details ID, product ID, supplier ID and categories ID. Those tables that are related to others have their foreign key. For example, Orders have a customer ID, an employee ID, and a carrier ID because they are related. A customer may have several orders, an employee may have generated several orders, and a carrier may carry several orders. In this case, it is a one-to-many relationship. There is one customer for many orders. One order may have many order details, and one product can be in many order details, or one supplier can supply many products. A product has to have one category, but a category can have many products. Here we have another database with courses and students, where students have a student IDs, a name, and a city. The primary key is the student ID. The courses have course IDs, which is the primary key, a title and a number of credits, and then there is a relationship table. This relationship table could have added an additional field that would be the primary key, which would be the relationship ID. It would be auto-incrementing, but no. As it is a relationship table, it has been preferred the primary key be the two foreign keys. I. E. The primary key is composed of two columns, which are the foreign key of course ID and student ID. There cannot be a line in this table that has the same combination of course ID and student ID. We have talked about relationships. Notice that here we have a one-to-many relationship. A student can be in many courses, and one course can be in many schedules. And for this to be well matched, we have introduced this intermediate table, so that using two one-to-many relationships, we have a many-to-many -many relationship. What are the relationships that we can find? Well, here we have put them related to human relationships. 
A one-to-one -one relationship is the simplest. In this table, there is one, and it is related to one in this table. The most common is from many to one or from one to many. It doesn't matter if we flip it. It is that one in this table can have many records in this other one. For example, a category can have many products, a customer may have many orders, a carrier may have many orders. And then there's what we call polyamory, which is that one of these can have many in this table, and one from this table can have many in this one. There are times when the database system does not allow many-to-many -many relationships. It will always allow one-to-one -one and one-to-many, but it doesn't allow many-to-many. -many. In that case, we use the solution that we have seen in the previous slide, an intermediate table that relates one-to-many on one side, one-to-many on the other, and becomes a many-to-many -many relationship. This concludes the video where we have seen how tables are related in a relational database using a primary key that must be unique for each of the records in the table and can be compound. It can have a single field or several fields. Then we have seen that in the tables that we want to relate to that table, we use a foreign key, FK, which is a copy of the content of the primary key of the table we want to relate. And we have seen a diagram of how the tables are related. Finally, we have talked about what types of relationships there are, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many.